Welcome back. This is the uh, 500 video, or fifth video, I don't really know at this point, um, in our classic cocktail series. We're going to be making the Manhattan today. It's a super popular drink. It's really kind of researched in the past few years. Uh, it's whiskey, bitters, sweet vermouth. That's all there is to it. Uh, in our case, we're using Antica sweet vermouth. Um, I love Antica. It's got this very raisiny, almost kind of sweet tea quality to it. I think it pairs beautifully with whiskey. If you did want to use a different vermouth, you're more than welcome to. But the Met is really, really great vermouth. A little bit drier than the, uh, the Antica is. The only sweet vermouth that I just do not care for at all is Martini and Rossi. To me, it tastes like oregano. It just tastes like someone took oregano and just put it in a glass. It's disgusting. It's the only thing that I really don't use sweet vermouth-wise. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Fun fact before we start making this cocktail. The recipe for a Manhattan is two ounces of whiskey, one ounce of sweet vermouth, two dashes of Angostura bitters. Manhattan's area code is 212. So if you ever forget, that's all you need. Right? And the area codes were invented back when rotary phones were a thing, right? The more population you had, the easier they wanted those, uh, those numbers to be to dial. So Manhattan got something super easy. We're in Atlanta, we got 404 because we're not super cool. So let's go ahead and get started. One ounce of sweet vermouth. Now, because we're using a little bit sweeter sweet vermouth, I prefer a rye whiskey. I think the spice of the rye kind of cuts through a little bit of that latent sugar in the sweet vermouth. In this case, we're just going to be using Old Overholt. Again, 20-ish bucks a bottle. It's one of my favorite rye whiskeys on the market. It's two ounces of that. And then two dashes of Angostura bitters. going to stir that. You notice I'm keeping my hand on the glass. The whole idea behind keeping my hand on the glass is so that I can feel when the cocktail starts to chill. Because as we're stirring, we're really we're chilling and diluting the cocktail. And my first indication when I know the cocktail is getting close is when the outside of the glass begins to chill down. with the back of my hand. It's getting pretty close, I would imagine. Again, you wouldn't make a soup and not taste it, so why would you make a cocktail and not taste it? Still needs a little bit longer. Much longer. One trick that I like to use here in the restaurant is to take my cherry, put it in there, and then with just a touch of the kind of liquor that the cherries are sitting in, I put it back in, stir the cocktail just a touch more just to clear the spoon off. You also get a little bit of that cherry flavor in there. whiskey on the nose, those kind of spice qualities. Everything works really, really well together. Like I said, the vermouth has a touch of natural sweetness to it. Then the rye kind of comes and kicks it away with all that natural spice in there. And then at the end, you get that beautiful cherry. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, give the thumbs up to the video if you liked it. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and please subscribe.